Good evening, everyone. Thanks for coming out, listening to some of those tunes. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, please welcome the Come Boys. Whoa. Hey, hello, everyone. Whoa. Welcome. First of all, thank you guys. Give yourselves a hand for coming. Thank you. Real, real lackluster intro, by the way. Sorry. Dude, come on with the fucking, you know, question mark at the end. I don't know why we have to have a guy. I didn't. We don't need on, a guy at all. I didn't agree on having a guy do it. I well, I wanted a guy to just set the stage for us. We I want the uh, the girl that starts this, the races in Fast and the Furious. <laughs> that would be one cool. of those Chinese girls with the trucker hats. Hell yeah, dude! A von Dutch hat. Im- sexual import, orientation. Import she could be a lesbian. Model. Who knows? Dude, she's bi, dude. Yeah, but the cool bi. Right, you know what I mean Honda buy. All yeah. buy, all buy is the cool Toyota buy. buy. First of all, okay, that was a good riff. You it's think all well buy there. is the cool buy? I think so, right? That's the future. Everyone's gonna be buy. No, that's the past. What do you mean the, the past? The cool. George was, Washington was no, buy. Buy was cool like ten years ago. Nobody's. No, does anyone wasn't. buy anymore? Anyone. Wait, what's wrong with being buy? Nothing's wrong with it. I just feel is like anyone in here are... buy. All of us. <laughs> yeah. Everyone starts sucking and fucking right now. Prove it. Prove it. Come on. You were you were snapping. You're in there. That was cool. Dude, I f- I feel like no one believes bi people. I, I mean I don't. My my sister used to be bi and now she's just a lesbian. Okay. Yeah. There are a lot of guys like I'm bi and it's uh, we got we got yeah it. you're right. bi for another three months uh, and then I don't know Something I think that's I think these these younger kids they're all they're all bi are there any who's gay in here this what, is a safe what is you this? Say, well no I'm gonna ask if you used to be what bi you, before you were gay <laughs> if you went <laughs> if, you, if you did uh, the one foot in one foot out in the closet if I can did uh, was it was that the Charlie Brown? What's the song? One foot in, one foot out. No, that's the Hokey Pokey. Hokey, hokey Pokey, yeah, yeah. The that's Charlie you, Brown. That's, that's how you come anything. out of the closet in the South. You do the Hokey Pokey. <laughs> that's being gay in the South. Well, how, imagine how much money the Hokey Pokey guy made off that stupid fucking song. You think he made money? He didn't make Absolutely, anything. Absolutely, of course. That's in the public domain, dog. Uh, probably now, but not 100 yeah. years ago. When you know he was like, what do you guys that? think about this? And his friends are like, that's the dumbest shit I ever heard. <laughs> and now he lives in a mansion on the moon. <laughs> you know who wrote the Hokey Pokey dances? What's that? You know who wrote it? Uh, no. Adolf Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> Easy punchline, guys. Just throw Hitler in there. Show some respect. Sorry. All right. All right. <laughs> To for, who? for Hitler, Hitler or yeah. the, the actual Hokey Pokey? The guy. Hokey Pokey guy. Yeah. Which which yeah. one is worse? He's a patriot. Who's the worst guy in history? I don't know. The guy that invented that song. It's debatable. <laughs> I think the Hokey Pokey's fine. I don't know what your beef. That is guy had to be a pedophile. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Why? That's Everybody who did a child show is a pedophile. Yeah. Right? Well, I, all pedophiles they achieve greatness in a weird way to cover up the fact that they're pedophiles. <laughs> Sure. Like, who was career track to be Subway Jared other than a guy that fucks kids? <laughs> He's like, point. I'm going to be the millionaire face of a sandwich. <laughs> and then no one will find out because they're like, yeah, his life doesn't make sense anyway. So <laughs> that's probably as weird as it gets. There's probably nothing else interesting about that guy other than he likes sandwiches a lot. Oh, whoops. <laughs> I guess we were wrong. <laughs> You know, he's going to be getting a different kind of... Nope. <laughs> what do you, no, I don't, no, I don't I get it. I read that. I read I that joke. I don't get it. What do you, what do you mean? What do you a mean? different kind of what? <laughs> okay, so this is a, one day I open up the newspaper, which I read print newspaper mm-hmm. every morning. I see the, the Subway Times? Subway yeah. Times. Exactly. <laughs> I read the trades. As an alum of Subway University. I read the trades. I read the Chipotle newspaper first. And then, Subway. <laughs> and then I see Subway Jared's Subway Jared. It's a pedophile. Log on Twitter.com. Say Subway Jared's gonna get to be gonna be getting a different type of 12 inch of prison. <laughs> and then I got a check for one million dollars <laughs> oh, yeah. for oh, writing fuck. the best joke of all time. They still don't have a new guy. They were just like they can't have a new they guy. can't have a new guy. Why not? He's gonna because it's a spell. Once he's the new guy, he starts fucking kids. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> it's, like, it's, it's like a cursed thing. It gets passed down. Yeah. The next. How yeah. fucking unlucky would it be if they got another guy that was a pedophile? 
to it. <laughs> they so that out that bad. It is crazy. Like that guy couldn't have looked more like a pedophile. I know, right? Like right. he had the deadest, coldest eyes. Yeah. No, as soon as you saw him, you were like, "Oh yeah, of course that he yeah. was molesting kids." Yeah. Although he, but did I look... feel like that's the response most times. You say, someone says, "Yeah, pretty much." If someone's like Weird Al molests kids, you'd be like, "No, of course." <laughs> Not the Seventh Heaven the guy. Time. We've been. Yeah. We've no, the no. I mean, I feel like yeah, people. Yeah, that would be a guy who'd be like, "Yeah, he probably fucks no, kids." No, dude, he was like an older, handsome man. Yeah, yeah, but because he obviously show. fucks kids. Yeah. You know, handsome, old. I think ugly right. when I think pedophile. Short, young, it doesn't matter. <laughs> oh, so Pet- everyone could be a pedophile. Yeah, like Ken, Bone, a- Ken Bone probably fucks kids. Of course. For sure. Yeah. For sure. Of There's course. No even, yeah. That's what, when I, when I saw him in the sweater and everyone's obviously just bullying a nerd, like yeah. that's why he got big, I was like, this guy's going to get pedophile. And then they were like, no, he actually just commented on porn videos on Reddit. Yeah, and then they had to pretend like that was bad to justify Ugh. making fun of him for being a fat I song. wanted to see that porn. It sounded good. Half yeah. Brazilian, half Japanese. I'm sure there was a train involved. He only watched it because it's a train in the description. <laughs> yeah. Did you see his wife? His wife <laughs> the, is hot. The, the, the no title of the video was Model Train, and then he was like, oh, this is probably <laughs> my interest, and then it was models. There was someone running a train on a model. It's oh. a, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's what it was. A tutorial. Yeah. How to run a train. Uh, yeah, he uh, he did have a hot wife, though, that bone. That's did not he? true. Yeah, I think so. That's not true. Hot for him or, like, hot no, in general? No, dude, she didn't show her face. What? How do you she fucking show her titties? Yeah, it was all titties. It was all, she was, uh... It was a limited edition Ken Bone dildo. They were, he's really trying to cash in on this thing. Uh, he, uh, no, it was like just a headless hot woman that it was his wife. You didn't see this on what? Twitter? What? No. Come on, all the you guys, you, you Twitter bros, didn't see that no, shit. No, this was some egg account. You were no, at. dude. This is yeah, official yeah, Ken Bone. You got trolled. it was Ken Bone for twenty sixty nine. I don't see why that would be fake. <laughs> I think that was the real one. Yeah. Look, I got nothing here because you don't know. You haven't seen his wife. Yeah, no, so there's I nothing I could. F- I thought for sure you would have seen it. Does anyone know what he's talking about? Did anybody see this picture of Ken Bone's wife? That's just fucking no. That's bullshit. You made no. This up. Two people saw it and they're now too embarrassed. Well, you know, I like, you know what, Ken Bone's I like the wife, idea that you'd be like, my wife is really hot, and then somebody would be like, okay, let me see your a picture of her, and then you just don't show her face. Yeah, <laughs> only her body for privacy, dude. Uh, you know well, what, Ken I don't Bones, even know who that's disrespectful to the wife or everybody else. I don't know, man. It's disrespectful to us, I think, yeah. most of all. You got a hot wife, you show, you show it to her. Yeah. Goddamn American. What's the point of having a hot wife otherwise? Yeah. You know what his wife's name is? Her name's Ken Bone's mom. <laughs> That's who he lives with. Yeah. Well, she lives in Canada. She's a headless woman from Canada. Yeah. She goes to a different she, school. Yeah. yeah. One of those situations. Why are we still talking about Ken Bone? I don't know, dude. It yeah. was like news from three weeks ago. I know. We I, the problem is, is we need another sense. like you know animal massacre kind of story. Oh, uh, really good ones. Yeah, or that yeah. alligator. I feel like enough time has passed in the alligator. Today, funny today the story was that a porn star said that Donald Trump grabbed her pussy and kissed on her, and uh, so then I googled who she was, and, and it was I, Ken Bones' wife. And it was Ken <laughs> Bones' wife. And then I and then you beat off to her. Yeah. <laughs> There's no way you don't. That's I literally just right, saw yeah, porn star did. in the headline and I scanned for her name and then just Google. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Went from images to videos and then Yeah, no, I, how quickly it becomes like if I'm watching a movie and there's like an actress I don't recognize. Yeah. And I'm like, who the f- who is that in that movie? And then I'll like look it up and then Google's like, do you, you want naked pictures also? Yeah. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah, and I guess that's what this is turning into immediately. I can't. Yeah, in I my Google that was search, a good performance, but I guess maybe not. In my Google search history right now is Liberty Mutual Lady Sweater Big Titties. <laughs> <laughs> she's an actress. She's done some. She was in like no, that's, one episode. That's of Wolford like, Brimley. <laughs> yeah. does no, dude, the ones by commercials. the Statue of Liberty. No, I didn't know there was new ones. No. Dog, you gotta fucking you gotta beat off to more commercial actors, dog. <laughs> you gotta step your game. When's the last person in the commercial you beat off to? <laughs> Probably never, actually. You've never no to a commercial. I a know. girl's gone wild late night commercial. That's for sure. Every yeah, but every that doesn't count. It's yeah, a commercial for real porn. porn. That's not what yeah. you <laughs> that counts. <laughs> Before you have porn, that counts. Nah, nah, you can just. That's watch not, real a commercial porn. for porn. Isn't a commercial? That's what you're claiming. 
No, you could just watch actual porn. A commercial, but that's for like eleven year olds. Yeah, dude, Girls that's what I'm saying. At they least, have the, at least when you were eleven. This you won't, beat this off. won't be funny, but last night I found a, a Twitter account for this company that makes cock rings. Nice. And the company's name is Sport Fucker. <laughs> <laughs> And the, but like, but the way they advertise the cock rings, it has like the same tone as like children's toys, where it's like collect all of them. Like they, have, <laughs> they have like names like energy ring, and there's just like so many variations to customize your dick and balls. <laughs> and I, I, that got me really good. I wish I could explain why it was so funny to see those men standing there with with their dicks out. Well, their dicks out, but then they're just balls going off to one side, and then the <laughs> other guy's got like a different configuration. And it was like they were playing. Is there one that splits your balls? Collectible game, like was yeah. There is one that splits your balls. Really? Yeah, the sport trainer, which is <laughs> has one main hole and then two side holes for <laughs> endless customization. It's also a standalone ball stretcher. Wow, a ball stretcher. Right? Yeah. To yeah. get to get your balls looser, I feel like no, balls are I mean, it, saggy but already. the tone of the whole thing, it really seemed like there were just like autistic gay guys meeting up at the community center in the event room to like, you know, like which which conference do you have? <laughs> like, well, you collect all of them and then you battle, you, you battle the conference. <laughs> I watched on Netflix, there's like a anti-porn documentary. It's like, this is what porn has done to women's lives. And then I made it three minutes into that. <laughs> yeah, 100%. You're and searching like, everyone in there. Oh, porn yeah. is terrible. Well, what, what is her name, though? Yeah. <laughs> what's, what's fucked up about that is there's multiple like ex-porn stars that started doing stand-up. Like the ones that, oh, what's that blew all that? their money. And it's like, yeah, well, then I'm not going to feel bad for them then. If their, like, exit point is where I'm like, this is what I want to do with my life, <laughs> why should I pity you? Exactly. Right? Um, right, guys? Right? Yeah. We're yeah. podcasting Thanks. now. Thanks, right? that's, boys. That's this is being recorded than, right yeah. now. We're going to release this. So you, you guys so you get, guys are famous. So you guys are, yeah, well, you need to sign releases after this for each individual laugh you've done. So stop laughing. Right. Do you need to sign releases? Is anyone here a lawyer? Do you know if you have to sign releases for no. audio? You know, Fuck no, no, dude. I'm a lawyer. And you definitely are. <laughs> <laughs> I was a paralegal, my dude. So yeah, I, I, uh, I, I am a paralegal. Oh and, yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah. Um, did, what kind of what kind of divorce form? Uh, fuck, I, I was gonna set you up as a joke. Yeah, that would have been, been a killer bit. Um, we're just doing panel. Yeah. Do you remember those? Aren't you gonna get in trouble for like telling everyone about? The, oh, they don't understand computers over there. About Rosie O'Donnell. Remember yeah, when you said that on purpose. Telling everyone, just shut the fuck up, bro. We're getting you, you recorded you right now. <laughs> podcast, right? He's like describing the personal details of Rosie O'Donnell's divorce. Yeah. So, remember that? No, I did not actually. Works no, I did, did not. And you're doing this. I mean, we're getting recorded right now. You now I'm going to get in trouble. You 100% you have been Oh, this before. is hilarious. You guys are so funny. It's been funny. recorded before. You guys are so you, funny. You you Adam has a private email server where he's <laughs> yeah. emailing everyone about Rosie's divorce. It's pretty funny. Her big laugh. I, w- I just want to hear her in mediation and how angry she gets and what she sounds like. Yeah. You have she used to get on, get on, get the inflatable furniture. <laughs> I'm keeping all of it. Who gets the koosh balls? Yeah. She, <laughs> you guys ever watch those? Her bed Fucking is just koosh? filled with koosh balls. <laughs> <laughs> They're collectible. You put them. You guys see the Rosie O'Donnell movie where she pretends to be the retarded woman? No. I would say acts as, but it's she's pretending to be a retarded. Woman. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's not a performance. It's really? A, she did one of those. It's a cruel parody of a retarded. Woman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's called Riding the Bus with My Sister. The only scene right. I remember is she has to go to the, she has to ride the bus to the hardware store to get the. Uh, a toilet seat that she broke. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta replace the toilet seat. That's the voice she does for the retard, which just sounds like a the horn from a car from like 80 years ago. <laughs> they don't talk like that. Like I a Muppet? Think. Yeah. So she broke it by shitting too retarded? Is that? <laughs> yeah, I guess. Is that what I, well, did? if you live off jelly beans and Reese's Cups... <laughs> I don't know what that does to your bowels. There's a really good uh, Judge Judy episode where it's a, like, 400-pound woman, and she's getting sued by her friend for breaking her toilet. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and you know, it's I, she's like, I didn't do anything. And she's just, like, sitting there, and Judge Judy just yells at the friend. She's like, 
Your toilet wore out <laughs> while which she means was that, using which it. Which means that Judy has personally broken like 19 toilets. Yeah, it's true. And she's that defensive about it. It's true. There was it's a divorce funny. court episode where uh, there's a rapper from the 80s named Devastating Dave. <laughs> who had a single called the Zip Zap Rap. And I was watching Divorce Court, and I'm like, I'm pretty sure that's devastating day <laughs> getting divorced like 20 well, years you later know? you're a day i just head? happen to know yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know it's a day devastating day yeah, yeah i don't know i just happen to <laughs> some weird thing i happen to know and it looked like what him wrong and then me? he's like yeah i happen to be a rapper and then he did part of the zip zap rap on oh divorce my court God. Yeah, and it, it's terrible. You know, it's like zip it to the left, zip it to the right. That you could be a rapper back then. Yeah, you know, that's all, what it all was. Yeah, it's just a direction. Yeah. yeah, you fucking. I'm taking a walk. Take a walk to the left. Take a walk to the right. <laughs> wickety walk. It's the wickety walk. <laughs> you get your own sneaker and a box of cereal. God, I I always like thought it would be really funny if like one of those guys went into a coma, and then came out like. Today and then like, <laughs> tried to go battle rap. And he was just like, Mary had a little lamb. <laughs> and then the guy's like, like, I'm gonna rape your mom. I'm gonna kill you. I was stabbing her titties. Yeah, or whatever, you know. Okay, I took that. I didn't need to say stab her in her titties. Yeah, but. you went right at for. Do rape. you remember that Gleeshy, that guy from DC, Young Gleesh? Yeah, Young Gleesh. Yeah, he yeah. was like, I stab your grandma in a motherfucking titty. <laughs> I thought he, I thought that was graphic and kind of funny. <laughs> He's gonna stab an old woman in the tit. That's that's not that's that's really mean. You right, that is mean. I killed it. I killed I killed the energy, guys. <laughs> was there energy? I don't know if yeah. there's energy. <laughs> hey, Maso menos. I think everyone's just on edge because they're another being recorded for an yeah. audience of millions. I'm wearing a yeah. fucking wire right now. <laughs> It's all part of uh, that Adam's investigation. That was another really fun, funny idea I had, which was uh, uh, like mob guys sitting courtside in an NBA game, and you know how they do like, let's listen in to LeBron James, who's been mic'd up today, and then they realize he's like, he's wearing a fucking wire. <laughs> <laughs> they just kill LeBron James <laughs> in public. <laughs> this motherfucker's wearing a wire. <laughs> They're like talking about crimes and they don't realize LeBron is Fuck. <laughs> Alright, well that's a good laugh. That's right? fine. Come that on. Works. Uh, guys, yeah, you ready to get this show started? Show what do you say, right? huh? Come on! <laughs> it is, is it hot here? It it's is. A little bit hot. It's hot. Hot. Guys, listen. It's, we got a great show for you, hot or not. Let's get maybe take down a couple uh, degrees. But our first comic's hilarious. One of the best. Comics working today. He's on tour right now with Louis C.K. Uh, he's got a great album. Check it out, guys. Please, a big round of applause for Joe List, everybody. Hello. Joey. Hey, everybody. That was great. I really enjoyed that. Are you guys mad at me for... <laughs> that was a weird vibe. I'm like, I'm going to start with something positive. Tell him I really enjoyed that. And you guys are like, well, fuck you then. We don't. You guys seem like you enjoyed it also. All right, well, I'm really in a hole here, but I feel like I can work out of it. Good to be here. I've been over there for a few minutes. I didn't realize how packed it was. Boy, this is rough. Anyways, I did a show the other night. There was a guy in the front row. I thought he looked like me. And I went, hey, man, he looked like me. And then he went, oof. I was like, well, I didn't mean to hurt our feelings. Wanted to let you know, I thought you were handsome. Didn't mean to find out I'm not handsome. I'm very self-conscious about my looks. One time when I was younger, a girl told me, uh, she made fun of my forehead. She said, uh, you have a five head. And I was like, I don't even know what that means. And she was like, it's like a forehead, but bigger. A five head. And uh, it sucks to get made fun of. But then when the person immediately explains how they made fun of you, it hurts that much more, you know. She's like, I figured you wouldn't know what that means because you have such a big head. I had nothing. I was like, I don't know. No. Fuck. It was really embarrassing. Anyways, as is this response to the story, um, <laughs> when you get body shamed with forehead, there's nothing you can do. Like, if somebody calls you fat, you could be like, I'm not going to eat anymore. I'm going to work out and lose this weight. But if someone's like, you have a giant forehead, you can't just be like, huh. <laughs> there's nothing you can do. I can't just tape hair to my forehead. I just have to have a big forehead. I did, for a while, try to just talk with my eyebrows up 100% of the time. 
kind of shrinking up my forehead. But that's tough to do. It's hard to maintain an entire relationship. The person's like, yeah, my mother's really sick. And I'm like, wow. That's incredible. I got a normal-sized forehead. Look at it, up there. So that was a bummer. So I'm very self-conscious about it. I got made fun of a bunch. You got made fun of for weird shit when you're young. I remember in, like, third or fourth grade, some kids making some boys. They made fun of me. Because they were like, do you know what a blowjob is? And I was like, no. And they were like, ha ha, yeah, you fucking loser. <laughs> and it was weird because I was in third grade. And I was like, well, I was busy learning the rules to kickball. But maybe, uh, maybe I can learn about blowjobs now. And I had to go to my uncle. And this is real. I was like, Uncle Dale, could you show me what a blowjob is? And um, that was a weird moment. He was like, no, I can't. And I was like, all right, well, I tried. I tried to get blown <laughs> when I was nine. And then, uh, but nowadays, these kids, they don't have to worry about it because it's their internet, you know? Like now, if you're in like fourth grade and someone's like, I bet you don't know what a blowjob is, they can be like, yeah, I do. And then they just Google it, go to Wikipedia. They're like, yeah, it's a uh, sex act performed using the mouth or throat, also known as Philadio. I know what it is. I went to the uh, blowjob Wikipedia page to research this joke, making me the oldest person that's ever read the blowjob Wikipedia page, pretty sure. No one over the age of 13 has ever gone to that web page. And I don't know if I have a small dick or my girlfriend has a shallow, a, a long, deep mouth, but I don't know about this throat blowjob stuff. I never heard of that. I've written my fair share of mouth blowjobs, but this throat business, what the hell's going on there? Who's blowing people with their throat? I'm not a big porn guy. Maybe it takes place there, but I feel like your dick is too long if it's in somebody's throat, and it's also quite dangerous. I also learned this. The fruit bat is another animal that blows each other. <laughs> I never heard of a fruit bat until I went to the blowjob Wikipedia page. But I'm washing my fruit a lot harder than I used to. I can tell you that. I don't want any fruit bat come from my apple. I always feel like the kids that made fun of you for not knowing sex shit when you were young, those are the same kids that had teen pregnancies like a few years later, you know? Those are the kids that were like, you don't know what a blowjob is? And you're 10? Fuck you. And then 14... When they were 14, they'd be like, my girlfriend's pregnant. And I'd be like, ah, oh, you don't know what a condom is? I really got them back, you know? I, like, I guess that blowjob wasn't enough for you. All right. Hard to get a sense of what's happening here in this room. I'm killing the front row up here, but a lot of you guys seem confused by this stuff. <clears throat> Anyways, you ever uh, make fun of a group of people because you didn't realize they were right in front of you? Have you guys ever done that? Maybe you're too young. In the 80s, we all did it. It was very exciting and dumb. I was uh, seven in the 80s. But anyways, um, it happened to me recently. I was in the great state of Texas. Wonderful state. I was walking around, and I walked by a cowboy hat store. Now, uh, I grew up in New England. I've lived here in New York for many years. To me, a cowboy hat store, that's a Halloween store. I was like, that's hilarious. I went into the cowboy hat store. I was putting on cowboy hats. I was like, look at me. I'm a fucking idiot. Woo! And then I looked over. There was three real-life cowboys wearing the same hat as me, but non-ironically. And they were like, you son of a bitch. I felt bad. It'd be like if they came to New York and put on glasses and they were like, Cool, I'm nervous! You know, it'd be very, uh... That'd be hurtful to me. But I did it right to them. I didn't know they were there at the time. And I'm not making fun of cowboy hats. I think it's a good hat, you know what I mean? Maybe you guys have cowboy hats. It's good for you. It keeps the sun off your shoulders, the progressive ideas out of your head. It's important for things like that, you know, but... I don't know. I just have a cowboy look. That's my problem. Even if I had, like, a mustache and boots... I don't look like a cowboy. I look like a gay guy whose boyfriend is into cowboys and I dressed up for his birthday, you know? If I walk down the street in a cowboy hat, no one's like, look at that cowboy. They're like, look at that prostitute. Good for him. And I'm like, thank you. Good day, mate. Or whatever cowboys say. All right. The early stuff, that might have been on me. But that's, that's A material I just gave you right there, folks. I mean, that's a humdinger. It's always weird when you get caught making fun of somebody, especially when someone you know. Isn't that the worst? You ever do that when you go to like, a, you hang out, you know this one guy you hate at work. Really, you hate 100% of the people, but this one guy you've just decided to openly hate, and then you just keep it quiet on everybody else. I did that one time. I had a job uh, before this. I might after this also. Uh, but I had a job, and we were all hanging out. Everyone at work, we went for drinks, and there was the one guy I fucking hated. And then I thought he left, and I had a couple of drinks with me, so I just unleashed on him. I was like, I fucking hate that guy. He's the worst. His breath stinks. I bet he's got a small dick, all that fun stuff. And then it turned out he had just turned around for one second to order a drink. So he just heard everything. And then he came back. He's like, why are you saying that about me? And it was a weird moment because I didn't want him to know that I didn't know he was still there. So I just had to decide to be that mean to him for the rest of our lives. 
He's like, I heard everything you said. I'm like, yeah, you did. You heard me, you piece of shit. <laughs> I hope you die, you fat fuck. Ah, shit. And then I had to keep it up. I'd just walk by him at work and knock over his pants. He'd be like, eat shit, asshole. <laughs> it was embarrassing. All right. Is that not hilarious? I thought it was. I guess not. I don't know. I can't tell anymore. Oh, is this the podcast recording equipment? I'm going to renege on my offer to leave this in the podcast, if you don't mind. Go ahead. And, if, you, if, you, if you sugar it up, what's that saying? Sweeten. Sweeten. Yeah, sweeten this fucker. Put a, put a nice laugh in there. Or just, can we get a sound bite of this guy and just multiply by 50? I'm killing this one guy right here. He's all over every joke. Thank you. Appreciate it, sir. If you weren't here, I might take my own life, but... Uh, <laughs> I know it's a lot of pressure for you to laugh at this next joke, but uh, anyways, you get caught making fun of people. It's always weird, and uh, there's something to this next joke. You ever had this embarrassing thing happen when you're like hanging out with the guy at work? There's like one guy at work you hate because he's just boring. You know, people they just tell stories. And you're like, I give, I don't, I don't give a shit. I might be that guy to you right now, but um, <laughs> you ever do that? And I was like out to eat with this guy. He's just telling me a story. I'm not listening to one word he says, and then the uh, waiter comes, so he interrupts him, and we order. And then the waiter leaves, and the guy's like, what was I talking about? You ever had that little social pop quiz? He's like, what was I talking about? I'm like, don't put this on me, please, for God's sakes. Please think about what you were talking about, because I got nothing. Were you thinking about chopping my ears off with a butcher knife? Because that's what I was thinking about while you were talking to me. So, I've had that happen to me, though. That's embarrassing. When you're telling a story to, like, five people, and it happens to you, you get disrupted. And then you're like, what was I talking about? And then literally five people are like, none of us know what you were talking about. You're like, all right, I just wasted everybody's time. I hate myself. Oh, anyways, I can't wait for this to be over. It's going to be great. Um, I'm only kidding. You guys are great. I do have to uh, leave immediately, though, so I feel weird because gonna, it's going to look like I'm really defeated because I'm going to come down here and grab my backpack and then run through everybody <laughs> to get out of here in a hurry. So uh, I, feel, I feel great about this. I don't want you guys to think I'm running off to, you know, call my mother or whatever. <laughs> I'll be fine. Uh, right before I do that, though, I'm going to drop the mic and dive into the crowd. So just sort of be ready for that also. It's a big finish. I do it every show I do. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Anyways, this happened to me when I was young. This, like, hurt me when I was uh, younger. I had to have um, surgery. I had my uh, appendix taken out. And uh, before that, even, my tonsils taken out. That's weird that we do surgeries. You pull shit right out of your body. Isn't that kind of odd? Like, I had my tonsils taken out when I was seven years old. That's a weird, uh, weird time to have a surgery. Like, life expectancy is 74 years. My tonsils put in seven years. And they were like, you know what? That's enough out of us. We're going to get out of here. Seven years. Good effort, tonsils. But I had to go to the hospital. And it was scary because that they knock you out for the surgery, and then they take it out. And this is a true story. When I woke up from the surgery, I was missing my two front teeth. The doctors, they just took my front teeth. And then afterwards, they were like, well, they were loose, and they were in the way. I was like, well, that seems ridiculous to me. To me, I just didn't trust him. I feel like to this day, I feel like it was two bored doctors at the end of their shift just fucking around a little bit. Like They were like, dude, take his teeth out. And he's like, what? It's a tonsil surgery. He's like, who gives a shit? Just take his teeth. It'll be hilarious. And he's like, well, what if he's mad? He's like, he's a little bitch. He's seven. Who gives a shit? Just take his teeth. And he's like, all right, I guess that is pretty funny. And uh, looking back, I guess it was. But I was pissed at the time. I felt very violent. They took my adenoids as well. I don't even know what an adenoid is. And I never will, because they were stolen from me when I was seven years old. They just ransacked my whole fucking face. I'm lucky I have nostrils right now. I woke up. Nobody gave a shit. Adults just stuck together. I told my mother. I was like, they took my fucking teeth. And then she was like, well, you're going to get a visit from a tooth fairy. And I was like, how about a visit from a lawyer? How about that? How about we sue these assholes? Nothing doing, though, you know. I never trusted the doctors after that. I'm like, I don't want to go. They're going to fuck with me. And then people will be like, it's all in your head. I'm like, yeah, so were my teeth, adenoids, and tonsils. Those were in my head also. (laughs) Then a few years ago, I had to have my appendix taken out, appendicitis. It's it's rough. Anyone ever have that? It's a bummer. I don't know if any of you guys are doctors, but there's a test to find out if you have appendicitis. What you do is uh, it'll hurt, like in your upper vagina area. And (laughs) what you do is you push in where it hurts, and it'll hurt. And then when you release, it hurts twice as much. And that means uh, you have appendicitis. It's a nice test. Take-home test. Anybody can do it. So I did it, and it hurt twice as much. So I went to the hospital, and I talked to the guy, whatever the guy. I was like, I did the uh, push test. I have appendicitis. Pushed in, hurt twice as much. And he was like, great. And then he pushed in. And I was like, how come you're doing that? I was like, that hurts. And then he let go. And I was like, ow! And he's like, that's appendicitis. And I was like, yep, that's what I told you one moment ago. You could have saved me two hours by not doing the test I already told you I had taken on myself. 
And he's like, you need surgery. And I was like, great. So then I met the uh, surgeon. It was a woman. She was really sweet. And she was like, do you have any questions about the surgery? And I was like, as a matter of fact, I do. Will you be removing any of my teeth during the surgery? And she was like, why would we remove your teeth? And I was like, yeah, why would you remove my teeth? That's what I'm asking you. And she said, no, we're not going to remove your teeth. And then she pushed in on my fucking thing. And I was like, what the hell's going on here? What, are you going to hold that in until I'm unconscious? And she was like, no. And then she let go. And I was like, fuck. And she was like, that's appendicitis, all right. And I was like, yeah, I'm on the operating table. I don't know why we're still doing this shitty, painful test. You bitch, just get to it. And then they uh, knocked me out. And then I woke up from that surgery. And I checked for all my teeth. You know, I was paranoid. Wanted to make sure I had them all. 100% of my teeth. Successful surgery. But then, plot twist, everybody. I went to the bathroom to urinate and discovered that they shaved my pubic hair. <laughs> they just always take a little extra, these sons of bitches. I mean, if it's not teeth, it's pubes. I think that's why they took my teeth when I was seven. I didn't have any pubic hair to offer them. They're like, this kid's clean as a whistle down here. He must have shaved before he got here. Take his teeth as a penalty, goddammit. I'm just getting away with this for nothing. It was a bummer. Pubic hair, is a, that's a bummer, too. I was saving those, you know. I felt good about it. And now I have no appendix and a new look. And also, you can't get any cash back. You know, teeth, at least I got a few bucks back. That does kind of make it a little better. You have a tooth fairy. There's no pubic hair fairy that I'm aware of. You put a bag of pubes under a pillow. There's no cash there the next day. There's a nice bag, bag of pubes. That's a day older. <clears throat> Anyways, I, uh, <coughs> I think I'm dying. I might have to have my tonsils taken out again or something. I don't know. That doesn't make sense. Blowjob Wikipedia. That was something, wasn't it? I really thought that was hilarious, folks, but... Uh, Anyways, I have a girlfriend. She's got a sister. I was hanging out with my girlfriend's sister recently. You ever do that? That's always a weird. You ever send a text too quick, you miss a letter or a word, and it changes the whole meaning of the text? I had that happen. I was texting to my girlfriend, and she was like, how's things with my sister? And I was like, great. She's a lot of fun. I wish you were her. <laughs> and, uh, that's embarrassing. I meant to write, I wish you were here, but instead I was like, I wish that you were your sister. That would be better for everybody. And... Um, I had to call her, rectify the situation. I was like, I didn't mean to write that. I was trying to fuck your sister. So I was a little distracted there. <laughs> but uh, I do wish you were here for the bucket list, you know. I want to knock out both of you at the same time here. <laughs> it's weird when you date someone with a sibling, because they look very similar, but you have to pretend they don't. Because it's inappropriate to be attracted to your, your significant other's sibling. So you have to pretend they don't look alike. You have to be like, baby, you're the most beautiful girl I've ever seen. But this younger version of you is disgusting over here. <laughs> I would never be attracted to a fresher version of you. That's, that's terrible. All right. I'd like to be sexier. I'm trying to uh, beef up a little bit, and uh, I've been going to the gym a lot. And now you can't tell because I'm wearing long sleeves, but I look pretty terrific, folks. I got nice abs, and I won't, I'm not going to show you because I'm lying. But um, I was at the gym the other day. You guys seem like fit people. You're youngsters. You ever uh, you ever work out your neck? I saw a guy at the gym. He had a thing wrapped around his head, attached to weights. And then he was lifting the weights with his head. Have you ever seen that? And he was screaming. He was like, ah, ah. He was screaming as though he had weights attached to his head, you know. And I was like, I think we have different fitness goals. I think if you get to the neck portion of your workout, you can go ahead and clock out and head home and hug your dad for the first time. You don't have to work out anymore. You know? Also, he's yelling. I don't like those guys that yell at the gym. You know, those guys are like, bah, huh, bah. I'm like, I feel like you need fiber more than you need a workout, honestly. And, uh, the loudest noise I've ever made at the gym is, whoo, you ever, that's about it. One time I yelled, but it was for help, so I feel like it was a little more understandable. I dropped some weight on my chest. And luckily, the neck guy, he came over. He kind of scooped it right up for me, and that was nice. And, Stabby, did I get a light or anything? Uh, two minutes. Two minutes? Oh, great, okay, sorry. I'm not, I don't want to imply that I'm not having a blast up here. I just, I got nervous that I was doing too much time, and uh, not for these people, obviously. They're, they're begging for more out here, but just wanted to make sure. Every once in a while, you miss the light, and everyone's like this. You did 27 minutes, you piece of shit. And I'm like, oh, God, I'll kill myself. But um, anyways, so I was at the gym. And then the guy wanted to uh, alternate sets. You ever have that? I was on the bench press. I was doing a little low weight, low rep. And uh, the neck guy, he came up to me. Thanks, everybody. I'll just start waiting or letting you know where the jokes were. That way we can kind of... The neck guy, he came up, and he was like, hey, bro. And uh, he called me bro. That felt good. I don't get called bro a lot, so it's nice when it happens. And... 
He was like, you mind if we alternate sets? And I was like, you can just take the machine and all of my money if you would like to. <laughs> you have a six pack on your Adam's apple. It's the scariest thing I've ever seen. So I asked him though, I had the opportunity. I was like, how come you work out your neck? I noticed you work out your neck. And he said, in case you have to headbutt somebody, bro. And I was like, that's a great point. I completely omitted that from my workout. I forgot that I might have to behave like a wild bison during mating season at some point. I've never headbutted anybody, but if you are going to headbutt somebody, you should work out your neck. Because how embarrassing would that be if you got in a fight and then at your big moment, you just kind of... <laughs> and the person was like, what are you doing? And they're like, I'm headbutting you. And you're like, that's not, you got to work out your neck a lot harder than that. I mean, that did not hurt at all. That would be embarrassing. I'd like to be tougher. I'd like to be like a bigger guy who can kick some ass, you know what I mean? I got a girl. You're supposed to be able to protect your girl if shit goes down, you know what I mean? But I feel like I probably couldn't, to be honest with you. I feel like if my girlfriend and I were walking down the street and some guy was like, your girlfriend's a whore, I'd be like, well, we're sorry you feel that way, sir. And everybody has a past, damn it. I'm sure you're not perfect either, you son of a bitch. And I'd be like, run, baby, split up so we can't get both of us. I kind of nudge her. I'm like, oof, that was a close one. All right, well, thank you guys for uh, listening. I appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Joe List, everybody. Come on, let him hear it. All right. Guys, we're going to keep the show rolling. Uh, great comment coming up now. One of my favorites. Guys, big round of applause for Ariel Elias, everybody. Let her hear it. Come on. to be here i haven't i haven't lived in new york too long um it's i don't know it's it feels like a long time though this is a, it's a hard place to live right like i was depressed for the first two years that i lived here and i've lived here for one <laughs> i just sort of know what's coming <laughs> I, I think part of why it's so hard is like i never feel pretty in this city like at like as i i used to but i don't feel pretty anymore because models live in new york which is like an insane thing that models just walk around like amongst us. And I, I try to make my feel, myself feel better by reminding myself that models all just look like newborn horses. Where like their, their limbs can't quite hold up their torsos yet, but you just want to watch them walk. <laughs> I know I'm body shaming, but let me have this. Here's a, the other day I was riding the subway and I was sitting next to a Hasidic man and they are not allowed to touch women who they're not related to or who they're not married to. It's usually the same person. But so we're, <laughs> we're sitting there and the train was super crowded and it was like rocking back and forth. And so in order to not touch me, he started physically recoiling away from me to not touch me. It's the sexiest I've ever felt. <laughs> Oh, I'm going to violate a man's religion today. <laughs> Pretty good. Although I did have like a kind of a breakthrough the other day. For the first time, I looked in the mirror, and I didn't think that I was fat. I thought to myself, oh, I have really nice eyes. Like, I really like my eyes. And then I realized that's because eyes are the one body part that can't get fat. It's the only one. You can't. There's no amount of weight. There's no eye weight. Right? Like you can pour gravy directly into your eyes and they won't get, they'll get infected, but that's as close as you can get to having a fat eye. So. Nobody else feels fat? Because I'll just wake up in the morning feeling great? I don't think that's true. I think body image is something that everybody struggles with and it doesn't matter what you look like. I used to work with this girl who was really tiny. She was like five to 100 pounds. And one day we were talking, and I, I I said something like, I would kill to look like you, Danielle. And she said, she said, well, Ariel, do you do you run? <laughs> well, like errands? <laughs> no, but maybe I should, because then I would I would look like you, and I would love to look like you. And she said something so interesting. She said she said, no, Ariel, I would kill to look like you, which. Like, what a moment. <laughs> like, it really just goes to show you that skinny people are dumb and wrong. <laughs> Thanks, Steph. Um, I'm staying in decent shape. I have two day jobs right now because I'm doing well. Thank you. Um, one of them, I'm a dog walker, which is fun. Uh, one of the dogs that I walk is named Crosby. 
which is a problem because most people think I say Cosby. <laughs> and I am not, but it leads to a real awkward conversation. They're always like, wait, I'm sorry, did you just say that that dog's name is Cosby? I'm like, oh my God, no. But he will try to hump you, and he does not understand the word no. <laughs> but the similarities stop there. <laughs> my other job, I teach cooking classes to children in private schools in Manhattan. <laughs> it's a real job that I do. It's fun, though. I get to go into these private schools and teach kids how to tell their maids they're doing it wrong. <laughs> but it's very rewarding. Because that's most of it. Like, these kids, they're very rich. It's like an insane amount of rich that I had never confronted before. Like, like they're so rich, they enjoy the winter. <laughs> that's too rich. <laughs> We got back from winter break last year, and I asked them, I was like, hey, guys, how was your break? And this one little girl she started twirling her hair. She's like, oh, my God, Chef Ariel, just, like, twirling their hair because it's, like, filled with nutrients or whatever. It's like, <laughs> Chef Ariel, we went skiing. Do you ski? <laughs> I have student loans. I'm never going skiing. <laughs> it's not in the cards for me. By the way, you know you're in a private school when the gym teachers are still physically fit. <laughs> it's not what they're supposed to look like. <laughs> gym teachers aren't supposed to be hot, right? Like a gym teacher is supposed to look like he's never taken a gym class before. <laughs> or she. Women can be failures, too. <laughs> 2016. I'm with her. Um, it's just, it's upsetting because I think most kids, like we grow up with a gym teacher because... Every child needs that one adult in their life who they don't have to respect. <laughs> and it's usually, it's usually a gym teacher. You ever see a gym teacher take out a lesson plan? <laughs> and you want to be like, oh my God, no, 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 no. You're the lesson. <laughs> Is anybody here a gym teacher? <laughs> oh. <laughs> It's happened. <laughs> One time after a show, this guy came up to me. He goes, hey, I'm a gym teacher. Oh. Of course you are. Um, <laughs> and I asked him, was that joke okay? And he said, no, it was a little meaner than it had to be. <laughs> I was like, oh, but that's my thing. <laughs> uh, but I apologized because I don't think that's the point of comedy. Right? Like, I, I don't want anybody to leave here feeling, feeling bad about themselves. So, so I apologized, and I said, look, man, I'm so sorry. Let me make it up to you. Do you want to go get high? And he was like, yeah, of course. I'm a gym teacher. Let's <laughs> go so get high. Uh, when I first moved to New York, I lived in my grandmother's cousin's basement in Queens, which sounds creepy, I know, but it was. <laughs> ah... I moved out because we just didn't get along, and when I, I moved into a new neighborhood and I looked up the sex offenders in my new neighborhood, because I'm a woman, and that's what we do. We have to know how scared to be. And in my new neighborhood, I live close to a school, so it was like the normal amount, like not a big deal. Um, but then I decided for fun to look up when I lived with him, and I found his house came up, like his address, and so I Googled him. And I also Googled his wife because equal opportunity, like women, it can be women too. I mean, it was him. It's always him. But, uh, you know, like 2016, I'm with her. So I, it, I, I found the court case that he was involved in and I read it and I realized that he is a convicted pedophile and I lived with him for six months. What a horrible way to realize you're getting older. <laughs> Like, oh, you found a gray hair? I lived with a pedophile who didn't hit on me. Because not only did he not hit on me, it means that all of my neighbors who had to know by law saw me move in, looked at me, and were like, she'll be fine. <laughs> I, uh, I moved here from New Orleans. I don't know if anybody's ever been there before. It's real fun, real cool. I used to live in a really bad neighborhood called New Orleans. <laughs> this place is terrifying. I remember I realized one time I, uh, my neighbor was walking his pit bulls, and I was like, oh, my God, are they rescues? And he was like, not yet. <laughs> I'm like, ah, I got to go. <laughs> 
I have an older brother too who like my older brother he's he's like good you know what I mean like he's a good man and he's very successful uh, which granted my idea of successful is just like someone who gets their hair cut on a regular basis but he's doing it and uh, I used to think that that meant my parents loved him more and then I realized it that's not what it means it means that it's way easier for me to make them proud <laughs> than it is for him too standards for him are so high so low for me we went home last year for thanksgiving and he decided to run a half marathon because fuck him who runs a half marathon over thanksgiving and uh it was the night before the marathon my parents had gone to sleep he and i were like staying up late we were having this nice bonding moment and i was like you know what i'm gonna drive you to the race tomorrow like like i like this i like what we're having here like this doesn't happen so often and so, uh, so the next morning, it was, like, still dark. My parents were asleep. We woke up. I drove him to the race. We came home. Uh, he did great. I, like, had water for him. Uh, he walked into the door to see my mom first, and I heard my mom ask, like, hey, how was the race? And he said, it was great. I finished in a personal best, which means he's done this before. <laughs> Fuck him. <laughs> and my mom said, that's great, but you smell disgusting. I need you to go shower. And then I walked into the door, and my mom looked at me, and she said, Ariel, you got up? <laughs> I am so proud of you. <laughs> oh, no. Um, I have a lot of medical issues, too, but, like, I don't know. It makes dating a little tricky. It makes everything kind of tricky. Uh, well, I refer to it affectionately as adult acne, and my doctor is always like, hey, that's not cute. It's herpes. You have to call it herpes. It's not as clever as you think that you're just calling it adult acne. Also, you have adult acne. It sounds way worse than it is. Like, there's a whole stigma surrounding herpes, and it's not, it's really not that bad. Like, I, I feel like it wouldn't sound nearly as bad if it wasn't plural. <laughs> right? Like, if I was up here and I was like, I have a herp, you'd be like, oh my god, that's adorable. <laughs> Super cute. <laughs> <It's a> little herp. <laughs> sounds like the noise a baby makes when it hiccups. Like a herp. Herp. I've never been around a baby. <laughs> My boyfriend does not have herpes. He likes me to say that, uh, but he doesn't. He was cool about it at first, and then I think the, the realization sort of dawned on him. He goes, he, One day he was like, wait, does this mean that we have to use a condom every time we have sex? I mean, technically we could not use a condom, <laughs> and you could just get it. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you just get it? <laughs> and he said, "No." Um, he said, "He said, oh man, that sucks because sex without a condom feels so much better." Like, yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> why we're having this conversation <laughs> I figured that out three boyfriends ago <laughs> so. I do have herpes I want to be very clear I really have it this girl came up to me after a show once she was like wait you don't really have herpes do you I was like no that's just a cute thing I'm making up to get guys like yeah it's real I just wanted to make my parents proud um yeah it's real and she was like that's disgusting I used the bathroom after you it's a myth. You can't get it from a toilet seat. She goes, no, I have a friend who got it that way. <laughs> well, then herpes are the least of her problems because she is having sex with toilet seats. <laughs> How do you think I pee? You think I go in there and I'm just like... Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> That'll play on the podcast well. <laughs> I got it. I got herpes from my ex-boyfriend. Um, thank you so much. Um, he, I guess he like heard that I was talking about it on, on stage and in jokes. I'm very famous. Uh, and he, he called me up one day and he goes, he goes, 
I think it's so disgusting. That's what he sounds like. <laughs> I think it's so disgusting. I'm very good at voices. Um, I think it's so di- All men sound the same to me. <laughs> I think it's so disgusting that you're talking about herpes on stage. Like, how are you going to tell me it's disgusting? You gave it to me. Was, yeah, but I don't talk about it. It's like, yeah, I know. That's why we're having this conversation. You guys are so wonderful. Thank you so much. And Ariane Elias. Hey, hey, how about a hand for Ariel, everybody? Huh? Oh, boy. Guys, having fun? What do you say, huh? All right. Let's get this. There's real waiting room energy in here for some reason. I don't know what's going on, but uh, you're, you seem tense. Are you okay? What's going on, man? You just seem... Is everything okay? For real? There's like... There's sadness behind those eyes. <laughs> what's going on, dude? dude get, 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 hit me up, dude. I, I know shit. Tony, tell, tell him, dude. <laughs> tell him I'm a good guy to speak to. What do you got? What's going on? Something is troubling you, dude. You're not getting out of this. So you're a fucking liar, dude. That's what it is. Those are your biggest issues. You tell me nothing's bothering you? No. There's no payoff, by the way, everyone. I'm just hoping he says something that I'll make something funny, but... All right. You're out. You're bounced. Get the fuck out of here, all right? We need open honesty. I want an emotional thing going on here, guys. Um... Okay, well, how about you? Is everything okay? You're too eager. All right, this isn't happening. Because you're just, the whole time I was talking to him, you are like, come on, right here. I got seven minutes, baby. I can't wait to fucking unload. What do you got? You had something. Oh, and now you're choking, dude? Come on. Huh? <laughs> That's how much he wanted to say that. It's not even his turn at all. He was just like, the whole time Ariel said the word herpes, he was like, I got something for the people. I feel like you got a nice story about why you know that. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> You're a doctor. You don't have just a bumpy dick. I, I'm gonna get. I'm guessing bumpy dick over doctor. Do you know what I mean? If I had, if those were my two options. Adult acne. Adult acne. You could. <laughs> there's uh, Warren P. It's just in Braille. His dick is his dick is the Iliad in Braille. That's <laughs> Oh, boy. Guys, I'm happy to be in New York. I've been traveling a nice amount. Uh, been going to a bunch of dumb cities. Um, I went to I went to Tampa. Anybody been to Tampa? It's a weird place. Every every woman in Tampa is, is a, looks like the hottest waitress at a bowling alley. Like, that's, that's the vibe in Tampa. Um, okay, that's pretty good. Um, I'm just going to get all these observations out, guys. Been staying at a lot of hotels also. Um, it's weird. I, I don't know about hotels. I get nervous about hotels and hotel towels especially. Like when it comes to hotel towels, I feel like it's the same rule as like a new person you're dating. It's just like better not to think about how much cum has been on them. Do you know what I mean? Like that. Anything? All right. Uh, just check in. I don't know if they're good. You know what I mean? I'm guessing they're okay. Um Fuck, I don't know. Those, I think that's my, those are my road observations, guys. <laughs> Stavi on the road. There's one about jizz and one about trashy hot women in Tampa. Um, I don't fucking know. I like being in New York. I feel like I haven't... I've been here like a year now, and I'm, I'm mad. I don't have like a New York... So everyone's got like a, oh, dude, only in New York story. Like Everyone's like, oh, my grandma got fingered by Frank Sinatra, brother. <laughs> only in New York. <laughs> I don't have that. I, the only thing, one time I was walking, uh, I was just walking and I was like, fuck, look at that ass. This fuck, fucking, I saw some guys like, look at this fucking piece of shit. It looks like a, like a broke ass Adam Duritz from fucking Counting Crows, right? And then I got close to him and it just was him. Like, that's my only, <laughs> he was wearing a Led Zeppelin shirt, like a fucking loser. He was like a, like a 14 year old child. It was like a Target Led Zeppelin shirt too, you know? It was like one color because they couldn't afford the detail on the naked angel guy. <laughs> Don't pretend you piece of shit didn't have a Led Zeppelin face. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I'm, I'm not standing for you, motherfucker. You, uncross your arms right now. I don't like this body language. No crossed arms, all right? This is fucking... You've embarrassed me in front of my friend Joe and Ariel by not laughing enough, and it's stopping right the fuck now! 
That's it? That's all kicking this fucking... I'm going to fucking throw... I'm going to beat you. That's... I'm boxing the next person that doesn't laugh at a joke. All right? I'm boxing you. Physical hand-to-hand -hand combat. Your arms are crossed again. All right? So just watch out. Because I will not have this anymore. It would help if I had jokes to go into right now. But guess what, baby? I'm stalling until I remember what it was I wanted to talk about. But I'm going to keep them in this fucking tone. So that I maintain some semblance of control, even though it's all artificial. Thank you very much. So fucking dating is fucking weird, huh? <laughs> Who's on? <laughs> that is what I want to talk about. What a hack. Um... <sighs> Uh, I am actually going to go into the dating jokes, so shut up. Well, maybe drinking jokes. I don't know. I've been getting, uh, I've been getting real drunk recently, guys. I feel like I got to get it under control. I've been getting drunk, but I've been getting like a, like a special kind of drunk. Like I've been getting. Well, looks like I'm not friends with those people anymore. Drunk, you know. You're just, you're just drafting an apology email the next day. You're like, no, easier never to see these people again. For the rest of my life. If you're going to drink, my advice is drink with drunk people, right? Like, drunk people remember things exactly the way you do. Like, the next day you're reminiscing with your drunk bros. You're like, dude, last night was crazy. You fought that midget, and then you hooked up with the hottest girl I've ever seen in my life. That same story with a sober person is just like, hey, man, you hit a kid. <laughs> You slapped a child, and then you just kissed a lamp for like 20 minutes. It was very strange behavior. Um, I don't know. I don't fucking... I'm, I am going to talk about dating now, because I don't give a fuck, right? Like, I don't care. What about anybody here do a uh, little tinned? Anybody tinding? Tinder? Clap if you are. You're fucking liars! I just know you're liars. That's what gets me... Well, I thought we had a thing of honesty going here. And now you're going to fucking sit on your hands? Show me your phones, you pieces of shit. You want me to go through your apps? Because I know Tinder's on there. Oh, I only use it when I'm drunk. Whatever, dude. It's on there. So clap. You know what I'm saying? Thank you, sir. All right. I, you guys are falling in line pretty nicely. Do you know what I mean? We're going to have to do a lot of work over here, though. Uh, how's it going? How's Tinder going for you? Not good. Just a solemn nod. Just like fucking. Not good? Not good for you either, sir? <sighs> yeah, I don't know. It's tough. I don't know. I, I like Tinder. I, I like Tinder, though, because I always assumed a lot of women didn't want to fuck me. But now I know. You know what I mean? Like now, now 80 women a day pass. So it's like you just swipe like one on, by accident. You're like, oh, man, that cross-eyed woman with no teeth. Oh, no, she also is not matching me. So... Really got a lot of soul searching to do. Uh, I don't fucking know what to do about dating. I hate it. I'm self conscious about a lot. I'm, I'm going bald. And I know going is generous, but let me have it. You know what I mean? Like, you don't have to be dicks. That's not, I don't want that to be the only clap I get, sir, by the way. You are bald as fuck. Uh, I get it. I was in I sat my friends down and came out as bald. Like, that's, like that's something you have to do. And everyone treated me like I was fucking a naive housewife that was getting cheated on. They're like, oh, honey, you didn't know. When's the last time you and Hare were together? Hare's been cheating on you with your lower back for years now. So. I hate it. My whole life I've had just enough personality for fat. Now you're throwing bald in the mix? I don't know. I have to start reading? I don't want to do that, you guys. That seems terrible. When you're going bald, though, it's like you have to cherish every haircut. You know what I mean? Like every haircut's like a grandparent's birthday party. <laughs> it, it could be the last one, you guys, so. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know um, what to do about <clears throat> my baldness, my general dating. I hate, I'm trying to date now. I've been, I don't know. I've been getting over, I've been in getting over the same person for a while. I'm trying to date. A lot of random hookups just to make you feel like a useful person. That's tough, though. Like, a random hookup stuff, because, like, you go through a lot of the, like, the first dick pullout. That can go a lot of different ways. You know, the first time your dick comes out. Like, the response I usually get is, like, when a waiter's messed up an order, but the customer's too polite to send it back. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah, like, a... 
Ah, it's fine. <laughs> I'm never coming back, but it's no big deal. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what to fucking do uh, as a single. I I hate it. I hate. It. I went to a gay friend of mine for like advice, like not even advice, just sympathy. I was just like, and he just treated me. He was like, he was made fun of me. It sucked. He was like, dude, you don't have sex. I have sex all the time. But that's not fair, you guys. A gay guy making fun of a straight guy for not having enough sex is like a Harlem Globetrotter making fun of an NBA player for not scoring enough points. <laughs> you know? Like, come on, man. No one plays defense in your league. <laughs> a lot of showmanship. <laughs> There's like a lot of... <laughs> All right. Well, that's my time, guys. Thank you so much. I think it's going to get better than that. Huh? All right. Uh, we got seriously. We got a great show. This is good. Keep it going. No arms crossed. Like I said, I will slap you if I see you not laughing personally. So I want to keep the energy up. Great comic coming to the stage. One of my favorites in the city. Please, a big round of applause for. Piss? He's pissing. All right. Wow, boy. So. Yeah, you know the show got off to a slow start, but I kind of pulled it out. Had a good joke at the end. Let's fucking get Petey up at no, no fucking. Hey, he's right here. Hey, he's right here. hey how about that? Clap, you piece of shit. Petey, Petey, Petey. I didn't know you was doing 100 minutes between comics. I had to take a piss, brother. Give it up for Stavos one more time, yo. Stavi, the light skin poppy. Yeah, sign. You ever fuck Puerto Rican shorty from the BX, Stavi? Oh, come on town. I live in the Bronx. Yo, you know I got you. I don't fuck with them, but, you know. They'll see you. They're like, yo, this nigga read books. <laughs> what? <laughs> Shout out to my fucking NPR crowd. Hell yeah, yo. <laughs> Niggas probably read. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> see the acronym? I made y'all feel cool by dropping the N-bomb on you. <laughs> this is nice, man. This is big for me. Like, as soon as, like, I, I usually only need one person to crowd surf, but, like, I seen this fucking pack. I came from the Bronx, man. Like, this is just Monday night for you, right? This is Madison Square Garden for me. This is fucking everything, man. I just came 800 stops on the sixth train, yo. It's the fuck, you know how many baby foot tattoos I seen, man? On the way here, son. It's minding my fucking business, man. I live in the hood. Like, I be trying to appropriate small people shit, man. Like, on the train, I'll fuck around, pull out a Sudoku book on you. Like, I don't even know how to play Sudoku. I just know it's numbers. I be sitting there like, four, five, six. Four, five, six. Four, five, six. If you play, if you play dice, that means CeeLo. Four, five, six. You're welcome. You know what I'm saying? You look like you read books too, son. You read books, y'all. Yeah. You look like the type that read books standing up on the train. <laughs> you ever see the motherfucker read the book standing up on the train? You be like, this nigga's ambitious. <laughs> you on the train like, Yo, I gotta learn this shit. I gotta fucking learn this shit. <laughs> I be paranoid. I read books sometimes. Not really. I read articles. I don't read books. I read articles. Sometimes I be like, because I don't read a lot. You know, you know the train life. And I smoke, I don't read a lot, and I smoke a lot, so it's like a bad combination. So I be like on a train, like, yo, these motherfuckers judging how long I'm on this page. <laughs> <laughs> you start turning pages you ain't even read yet, you're like, yo, fuck that, they're not gonna think I'm dumb. <laughs> smoke weed, son. I love weed, yo. You smoke weed, right? Fuck yeah, I don't even know you. I just looked at you. I tell you smoke weed, son. I like smoking weed because I get fucking deep. I smoke weed, I get super deep. Yo, I fucking six feet deep. I be like this when I smoke weed. <laughs> deep! Like the other day, I was thinking I smoked some fucking Gorilla Glue. First of all, the shit was called Gorilla Glue. I was like, hell yeah, let me get that. Let me get that Harambe shit. Yeah. <laughs> Gorilla Glue, I smoke and I was just zoning out like yeah how come humans is the only animals that wear eyeglasses <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying we the only creatures with fucked up vision 
They don't got little animals with fucked up like their eyesight ain't all the way right. Little stigmatisms. <laughs> Stigmats. Flying in the screen doors and shit. Little mosquitoes. <laughs> little fucking hummingbirds. You really think a hummingbird's fucking beak never got caught in the screen before and he was just there? Like, damn. <laughs> He's like, yo, uh, ain't no reverse on a hummingbird. <laughs> he was stuck. Or well, then I was thinking, but maybe, 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 maybe they got contacts because they don't got eyeglasses for little animal baby faces. You feel me? Maybe there's like some shit we don't even know about. Right? I'm like, who am I to judge the animal kingdom? You know what I'm saying? Like, what, they ain't got little animal eye doctor, optometrist motherfuckers? They don't got optometrist little animals that check out the little homie's eyesight? You know they got little animal professionals in the fucking world, man. You never think about it. You don't think there's animal professionals? Niggas like this, gatherers. Those are professionals. You don't think there's little animal lawyers? Think about that shit. Little animal lawyer in the court of law. Right now, probably night court. <laughs> He's in court right now, like, yeah, no, my client ain't steal the berries. Yo. Let him go. And be like, where let that nigga steal the berries? Look at his face. He know his father. Ah, this is fucking dope, man. I said, this is big for me. Like, I live in the hood, man. People don't leave my hood. I'm like the Christopher Columbus in my block. <laughs> Every time I leave my hood, they be like, yo, pity. You think you're coming back? <laughs> like, yeah, the train's is 24 hours. I, don't know. I ain't got all the money, but I got a metro car. Like, you know, a little swipe. I ain't never hurt nobody. A little swip swip. A little swip swip. You know what I'm saying? A little swip swip. <laughs> oh, that wasn't on. <laughs> no, for real though, people don't even fucking leave my hood, man. He think I'm gonna fall asleep on a six train. It's gonna get to the Brooklyn Bridge, just fall off the face of the earth. <laughs> PD died on the way. <laughs> it's like that movie Rocky. Remember Rocky when he was fucking running through the streets of Philly, training and shit. And they was like, "Yeah, Rocky!" And they was like fucking throwing him fruits and shit. <laughs> Little kids was following him. That's how it was on my way here tonight. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Except it was Lucy's and coffees. Like, it was way less nutritious. <laughs> you know, nutrients. Niggas ain't throwing oranges in the hood. Here's the fucking... Lucy! We gotta have fun, yo. Come on, so what you... Motherfuckers, smile, man. You looking like you steal my money if it came down to it. You sitting there like... Or maybe you just high. You high? Yeah, all right, I'm going to take that. I'm going to go with that in my mental. I smoke weed. I smoke wax. I smoke wax. That shit is, I got wax in my pocket right now. I smoke a little wax. You be in the shit like. Why y'all was in there smoking wax? The first time I ever smoked wax, I was like, I didn't know what it was. So I like smoked that shit in like a BBQs. And I was like, and you know who the person that gave it to me was like, yo, chill on that shit. I was like, nah, I got this. <laughs> and then I was like, mm, mm. you know, there's like a certain cough. Like this is a fucking marijuana cough. Like this is this different than any other fucking cough. It's like a, and you're like, yo, that ain't Henny Wings. Yo, Henny Wings ain't Illuminati, son. That shit is Illuminati. They're trying to ruin the hood, man. They put Hennessy and Wings together in the same fucking the same plate. That shit ain't even right, son. World Star, that shit ain't in cahoots with the Illuminati and BBQs. Henny Wings, that shit is all fucking the hidden agenda shit, man. Donald Trump put Henny Wings in the hood, son. He's trying to ruin us. The election is popping right now. That's all we talk about in the hood. 
Just kidding. We don't give a fuck about the election. <laughs> That'd be the best part about being ignorant when you see motherfuckers just going crazy over shit you don't give a shit about. The people that go crazy are the people that got shit to lose. Like, niggas in the hood with nothing to lose, we just like, yo, I hope the bodega management don't change. Like, that's all we care about. <laughs> Gotta build a whole new line of bodega credit after that shit. You know how long it takes to build up a $2 bodega credit, man? You gotta go in there for like two years straight. Every day. You gotta ask him his name. Yo, what's your name, yo? Ah, okay, cool. Just don't give a fuck about the election, man. <laughs> Trump. The funny shit, too, is like when people be like, yo, if Trump wins, I'm moving to Canada. I'll be like, nah, fuck that. I ain't going nowhere. <laughs> They'd be like, damn, you really love America. <laughs> like, nah, I'm on probation. I can't leave. <laughs> I can't leave. <laughs> Fuck, I'm going to go. I got to stay and take everything this motherfucker throw at me, nigga. My back is to the wall. <laughs> what I'm going to do? Start reading books or some shit. I don't know. Stop wearing condoms. He was talking about herpes and shit earlier. I don't got herpes. But I don't knock herpes. Who am I to knock herpes? What herpes ever did to me? <laughs> Live your life, man. Fuck, it's days of tomorrow. It's almost over. Fuck, fuck raw. <laughs> What's the worst that's gonna happen? You get fucking a line of bumps on your dick. Now your dick is naturally ribbed. Come on, son. <laughs> Bitches love that shit. Tell them to keep the lights off. They turn the light. What is that? Nah, that's the special effects, babe. <laughs> ain't nothing but special effects. Oh, shit. I want to fucking... Don't light me ever. Whoever's in control of the light, don't light me. The light is when they like, yo, time to get off stage. So I'm trying to rock with my niggas right here. Come on, son. <laughs> I fucks with you right here. Where you from, bro? Seattle. Ah, that shit is love. I've never been there, but I know that shit is fly because Nike's there. Portland, Portland. It's the same shit. It's not fun. <laughs> <laughs> That's like if I'm from the Bronx, niggas like, yo, Brooklyn. I'm like, this is the same shit, son. <laughs> Brooklyn got a little more white people right now, but it's still the same fucking makeup. It's all good. They talk about gentrifying the Bronx. I hope, like, people be hating. I hope they gentrify that shit. I want nice shit, man. I'm tired of watching my back, man. I'm not saying I wouldn't watch my back around hipsters. You can't trust the fucking hipster. You let your guard down, motherfucker, kick you in the back of your head off a unicycle. <laughs> you can't report that shit to the cops. What happened? Oh, nothing. I tripped. I tripped and fell. I be wanting to make money, though. I was thinking, too, like, yo, if I fucking had money just to be ahead of the curve when the, when the gentrification comes to the Bronx, I will open up a chain of restaurants. Called Gentra Fried Chicken. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Home of the gluten free biscuits and free range chicken, son. That should'll be lit. <laughs> the hood wouldn't fuck with it at first because they're like, what the fuck is gluten free? <laughs> free range? But once they see enough white people coming out of it smiling, they're like, yo, that shit's gotta be something good. That's <laughs> what so we do. We appropriate each other's shit, right? I told you I appropriated Sudoku. I don't play that shit. I appropriated y'all shit, the smart people shit. I be in the fucking fatigue zone like this, like. You know how unspecial you feel when you playing Sudoku and a nigga that looks like he fucking steals is playing Sudoku? <laughs> we all, I'm cool with appropriation. You want to appropriate, you want to put on a Yankee hat and some Tims, I'd be like, yo, this nigga cool. I wouldn't hate on you. We all appropriate. The hood appropriate shit. Come on, polo. That ain't hood shit. You crazy? You never seen a horse in the hood. <laughs> the last time you seen a fucking equestrian rolling down the block just fucking chilling, son. You never seen a fucking polo horse. He got the shit on his shit. He... Never seen that, son. We fuck with it, though, because we like, yo, we can't afford a horse. Get the shirt. <laughs> Don't let me get money. When I get money, you know I'm going to fucking buy a horse. So I'm taking it to the next level. Fuck a polo shirt. I'm buying a horse. I'm going to give me a flyer. I'm going to give me a Clydesdale, too. Some of them, like, Budweiser niggas with the fresh Uggs on. That shit going to be a <laughs> What? 
<laughs> Come on, son. You ain't never seen a fucking horse with gold teeth before. My shit gonna be like... Arr. Kilo of gold on each tooth. Fucking jump man. Horseshoes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? My shit gonna have the 12s on patent leather horseshoes. <laughs> fucking Willie my horse everywhere, son. I'm gonna be Willie in my horse. You ever seen a fly motherfucker Willie a horse? And not break eye contact? Just like, ah. Yeah, my horse ain't even gonna know where he got two front legs for. I'm gonna stay alive. 12 o'clock, boys. You guys saw the documentary. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Yo, alright, guys. Yo, before I get out of here, I just wanna say you guys have been fucking dope. Thank you so much for having me. Um, keep reading books, playing Sudoku. Don't be fucking uh, appropriation shamed. <laughs> appropriate whatever the fuck you want to appropriate, man. Who cares? Y'all live your life, have fun, treat each other good. Good night. <laughs> You're going for Petey, huh? That was great. This is the, uh, that's the set of the night. So it's going to be me and Adam. So that was, that's, it, you know, it's going to be downhill from there. So if you want to file out now, I don't have a problem with that. Uh, I'm okay with it. You want to re up? Pl- please don't actually do it. I was, uh, I was being I was, uh, fake uh, modesty. My ego is entirely wrapped up in this. Later, Pete. Great job. Thank you. I love you, Bob. But I'm cool with you. I'm, I just met him. I don't want to lie. It would sound sort of weird. You guys doing good? You guys, uh, did Stav yell at you too much? You feel all right? I don't know. I'm sorry. He looks cute tonight, right? His old red shirt. Like a, like, a, like Al Borland's nephew. Got that look on. You know, if you guess how many jelly beans are in Stav, you get the fucking. That's the rule. It's, he's, he's one of those contests. <laughs> if you guess, you win. Um, I got nothing new. I was I wanted to go see that movie Sully because I'm like oh, I could probably that seems like I could write a joke about that, but then I didn't have the money to go see it. So, so I, I sorry. That's what I wanted to talk about is Sully. I have no idea what the movie's about. It just sounded like a silly name for a movie, right? That sounds like there. I, I think there's a plane involved, right? Tom Hanks is in it. I know it's good. No matter what, I'll be disappointed in it because it didn't have that Ethiopian. I want that Ethiopian guy to show up in that movie and be like, no, I'm the captain. And then that's a point in the movie. He should be in every Tom Hanks movie, that guy. I don't remember. He should just, because he was so much better. He saved that boat movie. That, I don't even remember the name of the movie. I just remember that it's the Ethiopian pirate movie. That's how good he was in that. They should retroactively edit him into every Tom Hanks movie. So he's like, listen to me. Now I am the one that's big. <laughs> no. And then that would have been a much better movie, right? I am, I am the one that has mail now. <laughs> no, I am, I am the one who meets Sally. I guess that was him, right? I am the, I am the one that has AIDS in Philadelphia. <laughs> Just goes to Philadelphia and steals all the AIDS from everybody. He looks like it, right? He looks like he probably... Like, I'm not being mean. He's a fucking Somali pirate. He probably has AIDS. I don't, or gout, right? At least gout. That's AIDS of the sea. That's... The, those Northern Irish sailors, they had, they had gout, which they called AIDS. And then, I don't know. I don't fucking... I, don't know. I wish I knew historical facts. That's the type of comedy you can do, is just fucking know things from the... That's what Dennis Miller does. He just before Wikipedia, people would just watch Dennis Miller. And they'd be like, you know, actually there was this guy Hannibal, and he was like another thing, and that's how that you would get information. It was Dennis Miller and placemats. <laughs> so you probably I don't know shit about anything. That's why I think how everybody's like, uh, oh, I cannot wait for this election to be over. That's oh yeah. So we'll all just go back to agreeing with each other like it was before, <laughs> like when we all had a good time online. That's what it'll be. Um, but no, I am legitimately. I don't like that I have to know things. I don't fucking like people are talking about how like do you, you know how scary it is to like tell my friends that I support Donald Trump or vice versa or Hillary Clinton. You know how much worse it is to be like a person that's like, yeah, I just don't fucking care at all. People get so much more mad at you <laughs> if you're apathetic right now. If you don't care, they're like, people like you are the reason the world's gonna end. And I'm like, I fucking hope so. I don't. <laughs> 
particularly like being alive. I hope it ends <laughs> tomorrow. I wish I was dead. Yeah. And you too, also, if that could happen, I guess. I don't know. I guess it could be better. World Series are coming up. You guys excited for the World Series? <laughs> Nobody cares. Yeah, I don't give a shit. I don't, <laughs> I don't care at all. You guys get mad about steroids in sports? No. No? Yeah, you should. They should they Thank you. More. Right. It makes it more interesting. I don't give a shit about the integrity of the game, right? It's stupid. Just let them fucking do stuff. I don't understand why people get mad about that, but then they don't get mad about, like, praying in professional sports, right? Because, like, praying, if you allow praying in professional sports, it's kind of like a tacit admission that God doesn't exist, right? (laughs) With everyone involved. Like, if you really thought God existed and you saw a guy praying to God on the field, you'd be like, what the fuck? (laughs) He's just cheating? You're just going to let him cheat? Like that? They suck. Just let them lose. You can't use God to win the fucking game, but they let him do it because like, oh, that's cute. That does nothing. It obviously has no effect at all. So, oh, remember, put your hand on your heart when we pray to the flag and, you know, do all that shit. Like, really, if God was real, every team would have, like, a designated prayer. It would be some, like, 100-pound dude from the Dominican Republic with one leg. He's just never beat off in his life. They're like, yeah, this is uh, Martinez. God loves this kid. He's never seen a titty. They would bring him out. And like, dear God, please help us. And then, you know, you've all seen Angels in the Outfield. You know how it works. You know how fucking... Which, by the way, that movie is a fucked up movie. If you don't remember Angels in the Outfield, uh, let me give, catch you up if you don't recall the plot of that movie. Uh, so the story is about, uh, like, okay, so it's a boy whose dad puts him up for adoption at age, like, 13, which... I don't know if you can do that. Just fucking teach him how to use the microwave and give him a key to the house. That's it. Just wait out five years. But he puts him up for adoption so that he can go ride his motorcycle through the north. That's what he says. Like, yeah, I'm sorry. I gotta go do this this motorcycle thing. There are a lot of maintenance. Uh, you know, it's, it's sort of like a whole community, so I can't really have a son right now. So he puts him into foster care, and then the son's like, Dad, are we ever going to be a family again? He's like, yeah, maybe if the angels win the pennant, which is like, just abandon your kid, man. You don't have to be sarcastic about it. Just fucking leave. Just say no. You're going to fucking give him hope and then go on your motorcycle trip. So then this kid ends up in foster care, uh, and then he prays to God. To make uh, to make the angels win the pennant, right? Which not, it's not even the World Series, just the pennant. That's all, <laughs> that's all he asked for. It's just to get you know sort of sort of the way there. And then God reveals Himself to humanity, which He does once every what two thousand years or so, if that. God exposes Himself to the world to get this boy's father to come back, and the dad's like, "Yeah, still no. I got more motorcycle riding to do. I don't care if the season's over." And it's winter now. I still have motorcycling to do. And then the fucking icing on the cake is that Danny Glover decides to, like, adopt the boy. And the final scene in the movie is Danny Glover, like, going into the uh, foster home. And he's like, uh, listen, oh, I'm too old to do baseball or something. <laughs> I'm going to be your dad now. <laughs> like, he adopts the kid. And then the kid's like, great, I'm going to be a family again. Which that, I don't know, how cool would that be to live with that guy? Like, outside of him being a, a baseball manager, he's kind of like a, just a weird, old, creepy man. Just stay with that nice old lady. That's my opinion. But then, so, he's like, great, I get to be a family again. But then he's like one friend who's the only other kid in the foster care is just crying hysterically in the background because now he's alone he's been completely abandoned he's like oh wait i guess i can't leave anthony and then danny glover's like oh what oh yeah i guess i'll adopt him too and then (laughs) he's like oh all right and then that's how the movie ends with just a little bit more heartbreak (laughs) yes um i don't know what else is going on recently I, i don't i really the last fucking thing I saw online that I enjoyed was that story about Hitler's uh, did you you see see that story about Hitler's penis that was in the news like six months ago I probably talked about this at the last show but it's still got me going (laughs) the Hitler 
Hitler of Adolf Hitler fame. I like every like four years somebody gets away with writing a book that was like actually fucking Hitler smelled bad and he was an idiot or you know like a, it, like ten years ago it was okay to be like Hitler's gay because that was still bad. So I think someone released a book like that, but. <laughs> Well, this year there was an article that said like Hitler had a micro penis, which is pretty much the only body shaming you could get away with anymore. Is fuck with all the body positivity there is now. Like if you had a body positivity party and there would be like somebody that's like fat girl and they'd be like yay, and then a guy that's like cripple and they'd be like yay, and then there'd be like a guy that's like micro penis. They'd be like our party's over, get out. And everybody just they're gonna cancel the party. This guy's bumming everybody out. And he's a fucking weird dick. So. <laughs> So they had an article that said Hitler had a micro penis, which, by the way, if you're like me, uh, does not mean that it was hooked up to computers, as I initially thought when I heard the term micro penis. I thought it was a t- I was like, no wonder we gave all their scientists jobs immediately after the war. Because they're evil, but they're smart. <laughs> I've been fucking in the bathroom playing Candy Crush on my phone. He's got it on his dick. That saves a lot of time. Um, no, micro penises. And then I thought it just meant small penis, which is like funny. To just call it that. I don't know why you have to fucking pretend like you're doing science by giving it the name micro penis. <laughs> you're like, yeah, we put it under a microscope. You know, I, I diddled it with a lab coat on. So now it's, now it's a diagnosis, I guess, is how that works. Um, so I thought it was small penis, and then I was like, oh, that's kind of fucked up that they would publish that article for the body shaming reason. Because, like, look, you're not hurting Hitler's feelings with that story, right? You know, Hitler's been dead for a while. The, the tone of that isn't like, forget everything you thought you knew about Big Dick Hitler. <laughs> I got bad news for you. You, know, you thought the Fuhrer was rolling around with a summer sausage. Apparently not. He's got a weird little dick. Um, yeah, all you're doing with that article is singling out the most insecure group of men in the entire world and being like, hey, guys, guess what? Uh... Big news. No, it's not a cure. I'm sorry. It's, not, it's absolutely not. No, you just have something in common with Hitler. So you're basically Hitler on top of having to wear a shirt in the pool. So sorry, you know, uh, good luck to you. Um, but then I found out that that's not what it's done. Micro penis doesn't mean small. It's actually a level below. So like, look, if you have any kind of self-esteem issues, go to Google Images Type in micro penis, be the best day of your life. You'll never, you'll never feel bad about your, you know, weird eyebrow or whatever the fuck your problem is. Unless you actually have a micro penis, then don't do that. You don't want to be in that in that camp. It's actually uh, it's smaller than small penis. So if you have a small dick, you just went up in the world. In my my, you went up in the rankings. So now it's small, then well, it's micro, then small, then liar. That's the order of the three. I guess. But I think that makes sense, right? That Hitler had a micro penis, if you take it in context historically, right? Because, you know, I mean, it's so shitty to have a micro penis now, but imagine, like, in the 1930s, when he doesn't even have, like, the internet to get any, like, sense of community out of it. He can't go on Yahoo Answers. Be like, why does it look like a fingernail clipping? And there's other people like, mine's like that too. It's normal, right? He can't even do that. And then, you know, he's going around with this, what he assumes is the worst dick in the entire world. And then he finds out there's a group of people out there just cutting off parts of their dick and throwing it away. It's like part of a ritual. And he's like, they didn't even wait for the baby's penis to grow. They decided it was too big immediately. And that's why he did it. That's why he went crazy. I actually, I don't think anyone wants to know what Hitler's dick looks like, right? Nobody cares, right? But I am actually very interested in what his pubes look like. Considering, like, all his other hair choices. <laughs> They had to be great pubes. He had to be doing something crazy with them. Like, I think that's, like, what happened is he had the micro penis, and he was like, it's fine, we're just going to do some manscaping. And then he, he started trimming them, and he's like, I'm really good at this. And then he did the mustache and his own hair, and that's how he got his look. So I should move that part to, like, the beginning, maybe, in the joke. Uh, thanks for hanging out. We got one last comic. Uh, I'm going to bring... Stop, no, Adam. Adam, stop already went up, didn't he? Yeah, okay. Well, hey guys, here comes Adam Friedland. Make some noise. Uh, thank you, Nick, for, 
for your really exciting introduction of me. Uh, <laughs> guys, I had three uh, tequila sodas and no dinner, so uh, strap in. This is going to be a good one. Uh, Nick was talking about Hitler's penis. Um, I, I'm, uh, I don't know if you guys could see my circumcision from where you're sitting, but uh, I'm a Jewish. Uh, I'm obsessed with the Nazis. I'm obsessed with people that don't like me. So therefore, the people that didn't like me the most, I would be the most obsessed with, right? Um, I date girls exclusively that don't like me. Um, so... That's what I'm attracted to, so I love uh, Nazi shit. Um, when I was, like, a kid in a Hebrew school, I used to, like, get bored and doodle in my book, and then obviously you do that S that looks like an eight, you know, the, that's, like, a fun doodle, but behind the S that looks like an eight, the second most fun doodle, the swastika, right? <laughs> That's like a fun-ass thing to draw. You got geometry going on, little shapes that fit together perfect. Um, yeah, and I, I remember that uh, whenever I didn't want to get the... Re- <laughs> I, whenever I didn't want to get discovered, like the rabbi would see I wasn't paying attention, I would... Uh, with three lines, you can change a swastika into a cool guy on a surfboard. <laughs> That's how to, I'd cover my tracks. I was a genius, actually. That's the point of that joke. Um, I was a genius child. Uh, I uh, think I'm getting dumber, though. Um, here's the first piece of evidence I've been fixating on the last couple weeks. Uh, I wear a lot of hats, uh, baseball caps, snap, snap back baseball caps. I've been going down one snap <laughs> in every hat. What does that mean? <laughs> what, what, why? Why is my brain getting smaller? Okay, there's a doctor here right now. He's being really quiet. He's like, oh, it's a medical anomaly. You're, you're fucked. What is that, doctor? I'm fucked. All right. Thank you. I'm glad you went to medical school to tell me that. I have a friend that's uh, really good at school, so he's getting an MD, PhD. My friend Ari, I'm about to go to his wedding. By the way, fuck him. Okay, I'm going, I'm going to his wedding, and he calls me up last week. He's like, I'm bestowing an honor upon you. And I'm like, what's that? He's like, you're an usher. I'm like, all right, so I'm paying fucking $700 to go to your fucking wedding in St. Louis, and you're making me work? I have to fucking hand out pamphlets at your fucking wedding. Fuck you, dude. It's an honor. You get to hang out with me in a room before my wedding. So if I didn't have the honor, I'd like be knocking on the door. He'd be like, you're not an usher. You can't come in. And then obviously I would sing, you got it, you got it, bet. You know, I'd just... When you're on the phone. Yo, I love that song so much. Okay, what were we talking about? Hitler? Okay. I'm obsessed with the Nazis. Um, My favorite thing is like, okay, so obviously Germany blacked out, right? They blacked out pretty hard, right? (laughs) They holocausted like so many people. (laughs) They they fucked up, right? Um, But my favorite thing is like what happens afterwards, right? So they fuck up. The whole world's mad at them. You know, Hitler's shot himself in the face. It's done. You know, they got a new... Co- but they're still Germany. It's still a country. So, uh, you know, they had to figure out what their new thing was, right? It's pretty quiet in here right now. <laughs> you know, you commit real hard to killing, you know, 11 million people. And then that's over. And then you're like, well, what are we going to fucking do now? <laughs> So I think they probably had, like, a big meeting, right? This is a bit. I'm going into a bit right now. (laughs) My theory is they had a big meeting, you know, the town square of Germany, the country. Um, And, you know, 
provisional Chancellor Volkswagen was standing up there. And he's like, okay, guys, like, if you, if you really fucked up, okay? Like, everyone thinks we're total assholes right now. So, like, what, like, what are we going to do? And so, like, some, some guy raises his hand. He's like, okay, so, like, clearly, like, everyone's pissed at us. So, like, wouldn't they think we're cool if we, like, made, like, really nice luxury cars? <laughs> like, sensible luxury cars. And they were like, no, no, that was, come on. No, no, no one would think that's cool. So, like, someone else raises his hand. He's like, okay, so, like, like clearly we have anger issues, okay? That's why we, we did all that terrible stuff. So was if like we, was if we like um, use our anger that's inside of us and like uh, use it in like healthier way, like a sexual way, like we wear like diapers and we we pay like six foot five women to like step on our dicks <laughs> and we get into like like kinky sex. And they're like, no, they're like, come on. Everyone, come on. That's a bad idea. That's a stupid idea. And so, like, end of the day, they got no ideas for the rebrand on Germany. And some guy, like, in the back of the room raises his hand. He's like, okay, here, I have the idea. This is the idea. This is going to save all of Germany. Okay, so there's this kind of music, okay? It's called a house music. <laughs> Right? It's like, it's like it goes like boom, 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 boom. Like, what if that's just our thing now? <laughs> and they're like, okay, house music. We're going to go with that. <laughs> God, I hate that joke. <laughs> four years old. Um... You know, the thing, the thing that I like most about it, though, is that, you know, obviously, if, if, if like, the son of a guy that was in the Panzer Brigade in, the, in World War II, the grandson, if he, like, found out that he was in the basement of Bergheim Techno Club at a Shiza party, <laughs> he would be, like, so bummed, right, guys? <laughs> I just think that's how bad Hitler lost, you know. And I think if you're, if you disagree, you're, you're pro Hitler. I... <laughs> Woo! Uh, I I forgot my next joke. Okay, shit. Uh, uh, okay, well, 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 we got it. Okay. Um, my parents aren't talking to me right now. <laughs> They found out about Come Town Podcasts. <laughs> yeah. Not talking. Shunned. Shunned. Third time in my life I've been shunned in my adult life. My parents, we love to shun in my family. I, I had an uncle that lived five minutes away from me growing up, shunned, 20 years. My parents called me up. They're like, we had dinner with Mark. And I was like, why? They're like, we forgot why we were in an argument. That's why. <laughs> um, but uh, my dad, I, I feel bad, though, because my dad is just such a rich source of good bits. He's, he's so embarrassing. Um, he asked me, my friend Eric, who's here right now, he, he asked me, he's like, how's your friend Eric? And I was like, he's good. He's an accountant for a skateboard company. And he, like, looks at me, and he's like, a gay porn company? <laughs> And I was like, no, skateboard. And he's like, why would they call a gay porn company skateboard? <laughs> he's really, he's super. When, when I was a kid, um, we were on the way to Costco, me and my dad. And he turned to me and he was like, hey, Adam, you know who uh, Catherine the Great of Russia is? And I was like, no, I'm 11 years old. I don't know who the fuck that is. And he's like, uh, she was the queen of Russia. 
and she didn't like to have sex with men. She liked to have sex with horses. I was like, I was like okay, Dad. He's like, yeah, one day she, was, she had this wooden contraption built that would support the horse's weight, but one day it failed and it broke and her horse collapsed on top of her and, she, and then she died. She died fucking a horse. And I was like, okay, all right. That's, uh, I guess I'll know that for the rest of my life. And then I was like in a bar with my friends. I was like, yo, do you guys know who Catherine the Great of Russia is? A couple of months ago, and I was like, yeah, this bitch fucked horses. And they were like, my one friend looked at me. He was like, that's not true. Come on. That's not true. And I was like, I'm pretty sure it's true. <laughs> I've known this, like, my whole life. And he's like, no, it's not true. We looked it up on Wikipedia, and she died of being sick or something. But a uh, popular rumor spread by the French in the 1850s was that Catherine the Great, the Queen of Russia, died having sex with a horse. And I was like, Dad, you gossipy bitch. <laughs> That shit's from the 1850s? Damn, that's just a good rumor, right, guys? That started with some French guy in, like, high heels and, like, powdered makeup, and he was like, oh, she's dead? Well, I heard. <laughs> I heard that that bitch like to fuck a horse, you know? And then just a chain of gossips culminating in my father in 1998 in a Honda Accord. That's a dope rumor. You got to tell your kids that. We got to fucking poison our future generations. It's funny. I like urban legends. One time, Actually, Nick and I were hanging out one time. We were laughing about uh, the urban legend about Rod Stewart. Do you guys know that one? There's an urban myth that Rob Stewart OD'd one time doing too many drugs, and he had a. They pumped his stomach, and they pumped out two liters of cum <laughs> from his stomach. So we like did the math on it, and that's 714 blowjobs. <laughs> That's not a joke. That's just cool math that we did. <laughs> that me and my friends did. Really important math on the G train. We got to take the median load of a man. You got to divide that by two liters, accounting for no spillage on the side of his face. And then you got to factor in the time it takes to digest, which is six hours. Rod Stewart was sucking a lot of dick. That's the point. <laughs> That's the point of that. Should I save this? I'll do one more. It's an old one, and I'm I don't have the energy. But guys, you got to be here with me, okay? <laughs> you got to be here with me. Um, uh, when I was when I was 13, my family got uh, the CD in the mail, mini CD, for a, uh, it was for 1,000 free hours of AOL. And we were like, fuck, that's a good deal. 1,000? That's pretty much all the internet we're going to need for the rest of our lives. <laughs> that's a good fucking deal. And um, so we got America Online, and my parents saw this thing on Dateline NBC that there were uh, pedophiles going into AOL chat rooms. And my dad was like, Adam, uh, he sat me down. He's like, Adam, you're a beautiful, you're a beautiful boy. You're a beautiful little boy. <laughs> You can't go into um, you can't go into chat rooms on AOL because it's probably it's probably if if a, you can't try to have sex with girls on AOL because it's probably a scary man that's going to do terrible things to you and try to murder you and rape you, so you can't do that. And I was like, wait, you could have sex with a woman on the computer? <laughs> so I was like an enterprising young boy, and I I, I realized that. You could that if I went into lesbian AOL chat rooms and pretended to be a lesbian lady, I could have cyber sex with 
good honest lesbians on the internet <laughs> and it wouldn't be a scary man right <laughs> so i did i did this this is i i was you know this i wanted to go i wanted to go number three you know so <laughs> i did it i did this for for a couple of years you know and, I, and then i was in college and i was like smoking pot or something with my friends and we were having one of those like life so crazy conversations i was like guys i gotta get something off my chest when i was 13 i used to go on the computer i used to pretend to be a lesbian lady i used to have cyber i used to catfish lesbian women i used to have cyber sex with lesbian women on the internet and uh, my friends looked around the room and they were like oh yeah that was i mean we all did that dude <laughs> So, like, in reality, I was just having make-believe lesbian computer sex with other 13-year-old boys. <laughs> right? And it made sense. In retrospect, it made sense. I'd be like, uh, hey, my name is Jennifer Florida 18. Uh, do you get... I sent pics of my tits. Do you get those? They're uh, double D fakes, uh, which is the best kind. <laughs> And I was like, what, what kind of uh, tits do you have? And they'd be like, oh, yeah, also double D fakes. <laughs> I'd be like, wow, a pair of regular old lesbians here. <laughs> I'd be like, uh, you want to get things uh, started off? Um, okay, I guess I'll start. My pussy is so wet. Um, <laughs> How's your how's your p pussy? And they'd be like, oh, it's it's also very wet. And I'd be like, wow, just we got a lot in common. <laughs> We're building common ground. This is like really this is great. And they'd be like, well, um, pretend I'm going down on you. And I'd be like, well, I don't know about that. Let, let, let me go down on you, your real pussy, instead of my real pussy. But let me let, I just go down on you. And then it would just get confusing. It'd be like, yo, can we hurry this up? Like Monday Night Raw is on TV, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know the rocks going for the belt baby i gotta i got math homework i gotta fucking hurry this lesbian sex up real quick i'll be like i only have the computer room for another 20 minutes <laughs> i think that's a smart joke though because um gender and sexuality are fluid concepts i went to college guys and i learned that um <laughs> They're fluid concepts, and th and that fluid is uh, is calm. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I don't think I deserved a round of applause for that, but yeah, I'm done with my set, and the boys are coming back up on stage. Thank you. I don't think it was oh, yeah. 720. I think, or, or was it 714? I think it was. 7, was it 714? No, maybe? it was 722. Point something. Yeah. <laughs> he gave a half a blow. Shut job. I was the one that did the math. Yeah, I really I stole the Nick's number. math for a for a joke that, uh, on a stage. Well, I was trying to show off how you, how you could use the Wolfram Alpha app that I paid for, <laughs> and that's one of the ways to do it. It's average amount of cum. Divided by two liters. <laughs> it's five dollars. It's on the Apple Store. I think Harvard makes it. So They're sponsoring the show. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We all went to Harvard, by the way. Clap. Shouts out Harvard. Clap Shout it out. Up. Cambridge, baby. Cambridge. I dude. got fucking Goodwill Hunting. Dude, that's a right? that's fucking what Harvard. What happens there? That's a dumb school, dude. Your, their mascot is the crimson, a color. Come on, son. Hell yeah, yeah. Get a fucking get a marginalized. Is that group. where Fraser takes place at Harvard? No, it yeah. takes place in Seattle, bro. Come on. Sorry. That's the star of Fraser, in my opinion, the city of Seattle. Personally, <laughs> <laughs> that's a hot take. That's something. Oh, that's that, right. It's in the logo. Yeah, it's in he, the logo. Fraser did uh, with <laughs> Seattle what every Italian American that owns a trucking company did with New York. Yeah. <laughs> in the logo, where if you if you're in a, that's the final level of being Italian, by the way, is you have to have a trucking company <laughs> and then airbrushed on the side is your stupid Italian name, where the L's are the twin towers. <laughs> they yeah. all have double L's. Yeah, they're like, I did it. I own the company. Now I can die of heart disease. <laughs> <I'm> finished. <laughs> 
Um, well, I I was hoping someone would notice that I have Adam's hat. All uh, oh, right, where's your hat? Hat? your penis. So. That's nice. You're blessing me, boy. Is yeah. that a pretty good bit, you guys? What He's you also think? wearing. Uh, <laughs> he has to wear that hat later. He's wearing uh, Pippins right now. I think those are really cool shoes. Thanks. I'll put it on my head. <laughs> gross, right? That's a gross laugh. That's like jackass, right? <laughs> Putting penis We're hats on my out. head. Yeah. yeah. What happened to Wild Boys? That was like they went way too far with that show. Steve-O got sober and started doing stand-up. <laughs> Well, I don't know. That show was... I mean, I love Jackass. I think they're so funny. And they're like, yo, we're the wild boys, and I'm going to suck off an elephant. Is that a, is that a prank? I don't know. Is that, what's the prank involved? You're just going to Africa? Like, just, imagine being like a local in that village that's like, what the fuck? Is this... They have that device that steals people's souls, and they're making a rhino fuck them. <laughs> they just fucked a bunch of animals was the whole... Thing. That's all I remember happening on that. There was an episode where they were down south and Three Six Mafia was there the whole the whole episode. Mm. And they were just like by the end like Juicy J was like, I, I, I can't be here right now. <laughs> <laughs> These white people are crazy. <laughs> Great. Was, well Was it in the South? I thought it was all in the They did went to different parts. There was a there was like a down south episode. They love bothering there. animals in the South. I wanted to have a reality show that's just called Southern Animal Botherers. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like two hicks and they're like, We gotta get back to the compound because there's a possum, we gotta poke with a stick. <laughs> and it's like real intense, like quick cuts, sort of pawn shop for some reason. And they never really explain the thesis of the show. Just, you know, harassing snakes and stuff. They're just trying to cross the street. <laughs> well, I think uh, that's a beautiful ending to a beautiful show. I think I guess. so, too. I mean, um, how much longer are we going to do this? Do you know what I mean? I don't know. We can do another 40. No one has work yeah. tomorrow. This work is canceled. a podcast. It was advertised as a podcast. So Was it? It's, uh, I don't know. No. My, friend, my friend saw Bruce Springsteen last week, and he's like, He's like, the show got out at 2 a.m., and, like, all of Bruce's songs are about the working man. <laughs> and he's, like, making everyone stay up till 2 on a fucking Wednesday in Boston. Like, fuck you, Bruce, dude. He, Bruce, Bruce Springsteen, listen, huge fan, yeah, but, like, yeah. he's never worked on any... He just has he just has grease on his shirt from writing poems. How about how about how about, how about Bruce Bruce Springsteen? Oh, that's cool. <laughs> right, it's the album cover, but then he's just got a bunch of buttons on the back of his pants. He's like way too many. He's got like purple jeans on with thirty million buttons on. That is, that's purple. Bruce, Bruce Bruce wears huge Steve Harvey jackets. Okay, all right. That's the reference. Gang, thank you so much for coming yeah. out. That's the end of the Bye. show. It's thank over. You, uh, you guys are great. Right. Yeah. When are we back? We're, we're back next month. I think we're on a regular schedule, so we're going to be the fourth Monday of the. Is there a fourth Monday every month? There is, right? Okay. I don't know. I, I can't knows. do math. But, but yeah, just come if there is one. And if not, I don't know. <laughs> don't come. I just fuck come the next one. <laughs> Just fuck it. Everyone go home. You know what I mean? Everyone get the fuck out of here. Yeah, stop to... looking at me. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, guys. See ya. Bye.